The Australian Ghost Whisperer, with Katerina Legato and James Jennings. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode, glad you can join us. Uh, hello Katerina. Hi James, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, we have a special guest with us today. We love having guests on our show um, because there are some people out there with some really wild paranormal stories. Um, sometimes they, they're happy to come on and share, sometimes they don't, but uh, we love it when they do want to share. So we have my dear friend Kim who's joining us today. Hello Kim, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I've, I've, um, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, we're, we're excited to hear you, uh, uh, have you, I should say. And, uh, and the cool thing is, Kim, is like, I've known you for a few years and it's like, I don't yeah. see you often, but every time I do, I, it, things, the conversation tends to go to the supernatural realm and you always have like these incredible, amazing stories to, to, to tell me. Um, so I know, <laughs> I know you, you've got some real cracker stories up your sleeve. Um, so yeah. maybe, maybe plenty. we can, plenty, <laughs> plenty, yeah, there you go. So maybe let's start at the beginning. Like when's the first time you can kind of like, remember like having a paranormal experience and knowing, hang on, something's going on. That's way out of the ordinary. Oh, easy. That would be, um, the house we grew up in and I was very, very young and, um, I remember hearing, um, voices that were in the wall so oh. yeah and um definitely definitely not my parents or my sibling or anything like that and you know it was the second story as well so it's not going to be people just loitering in front so yeah that was the very first time and I was like that's that can't be a person that can't be human so uh, yeah. yeah so that was a very very start that's pretty, that sounds pretty terrifying. Do you remember what the, could you yeah. hear what voices were saying? Um, no, that was the weird thing. I couldn't make it out what they were saying, um, yeah. but it was two voices and they were arguing and um, they were really like quite angry at each other. And it was just like a really long, like kind of aggressive kind of, yeah, it just went on for a while and I ended up just blocking my ears and like putting my head under the pillow and that yeah, and just tried to block it out pretty much. So so it sounds like yeah. you were hearing the um almost the echoes of the past. Because when yeah. we found this happened to me, we were so young and we're so kind of open yeah. from the spirit world. So it's not just sometimes they're not actual spirits, but just kind of like the echoes of the past because you'd be so sensitive you could almost yeah. be reliving what went on in that house yeah it was it was very, very strange and yeah that I knew immediately that it was it wasn't normal of course you know yeah. <laughs> knowing that it's not normal yeah of course yeah but yeah so so moving along from hearing voices in the wall which is uh you know pretty scary what what what, what else has happened um, well, in, in that house, um, just like objects moving, um, things going missing, mm -hmm. um, obviously like the voices, um, I think it kind of escalated to a point where one night the, my bedroom door was like kind of basically swinging open and shut. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had two parents that were very much in denial about the whole thing. So um, um, literally they, obviously a slamming door is going to wake up parents. So they um, brought a chair and stuck it in front of the door and said goodnight. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sometimes that was happen. that. Yeah, they're too afraid to sort of, yeah, yeah look yes. at themselves. Yeah. My yeah. Like that too. They just didn't want to. I I think they were worried about making me frightened as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah. maybe you're already being a little bit sensitive. I think she was yeah. trying to just play kind it of, down. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, play it down. So when you talk about um, objects moving, did you see objects moving in front of you ever? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, just like, you know, just little things that you would think was you know did I really just see that kind of thing so only slight things but the door was probably the worst one so yeah yeah, yeah. Did, did you ever get to a point where even if it was years later your parents acknowledged that something was weird in that house um 
Well, the funny thing is, so my mum has always said that that house, they, they built it. So she was like, no, it couldn't have been haunted because we, we oh. built it. But then um, recently when I went to Europe and I was spending time with my auntie in Europe and she was like, yeah, so that woman died in like that house. And yeah, it's no wonder you had so much trouble with it. And I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> oh my God. So they told me they built it, but no, someone lived there previously yeah. and died there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You're, look, I get maybe you can ask to tell you that because that's kind of yeah. a little scary for a little, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I think it was something to do with the stairs because that just had a really horrible feeling to it. So, yeah. yeah. You always got the sensation like that you were like, about to fall as well. Like a yeah, bit like. Yeah, I feel she fell. She fell down yeah. those stairs. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> That's but... where it all started, basically. You always had quite a gift then of being able to, you still obviously can hear and sense and see spirit. I think for um, a long time I tried not to, I think, because um, I was so frightened. Oh, so yeah. um, someone told me a really good trick. They were said, they said, uh, tell them to leave you alone and, and they will. And so that's what I did for a long period of time was just say, you have to leave. You're not allowed to be here. You, you know, um, you need to leave. I need to be alone. So that seemed to work for a while, but then, um, I don't know, things started coming back slowly. So almost couldn't mm -hmm. avoid it any longer. So <laughs> Still dealing with um like paranormal activity you're still dealing with it now um yes yeah in fact I, it, it must just come like come and go because um sometimes it'll be really bad and then you'll just have periods where it's almost like oh still I just, like, yeah. yeah yeah it's like oh that that can't be anything but um yeah I've definitely had a few encounters um with shadow people mm. um Oh, like I've at, at this new, the previous place I was at was very quiet, but mm -hmm. the place that we've been in for the last few years has been um kind of new activity happening. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but when we were living in our, in that other place, I was almost convinced that maybe it was sounds all like, in my imagination. Yeah, sounds like stuff's been following you around. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's been happening in the new place, Kim? Like what sort of things have you been noticing? Um, well, so the one that I think kind of brought us to where we are now was um extremely strange and something I didn't understand and something I still don't understand. Nope. Um but I was in bed one night and um I awoke and there was this like kind of, I guess you can call it like an entity was like um, above me. And then it seemed actually kind of angry that I had like seen it and it kind of like rushed at me a bit. Mm. And um, the weird thing was is like I knew things about it even though I, you know, it was all so quick. Yeah. And, um, and my like immediate um my, well, obviously I was so frightened and I just did everything I could to get out of the way. So I literally, I, I have a scar on my elbow and I had this huge bruise on my shoulder because I, I was so frightened. I actually kind of like tried to get down low and like get off the bed, but we have like a little wooden board that, that supports the bed. And so when I, had come down on it and then scraped it so oh, okay. but it was still there that whole time until I was on the ground so it was very well, frightening yeah yeah so, so you said that well I've got a few questions for you so first yeah. one, first one is what did it look like yes so it um you know like if you stay in a bathtub too long and you get um it's like kind of like macerated skin it's like overly wet yeah so it had like kind of I didn't think it was a like a Caucasian person, but like it was white because it had been in the water for so long. Yep. Um, and it didn't have any eyes. Yeah, it didn't have any in the water. What's Stop that? Drowning? Was it a death body? Uh, no, I don't think it had drowned. I think it was actually like um, like 
like an entity of like I kind of got that it was like a river spirit. Um, so I actually got that it was an an um, indigenous American river spirit, and he had a message for me, and he was very angry. He said, and I don't know why, but he said, "Go no further," mm. and I was like, "I won't." <laughs> 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 okay buddy whatever you say i won't yeah yeah but it was just weird because i'm like why did i think he was native american um he he had like a very strange body i kind of almost got that um he was like a guardian or something or um oh i remember i i think the the I think he identified as like a gatekeeper but i don't really i don't know what that is and um I don't know. It was just real strange, real weird, and I haven't gotten over it. <laughs> so I can imagine. Like yeah, it almost feels like there was something he was protecting other people from entering that particular river. Yeah, yeah. It felt like I um, wasn't allowed to be X in that um that dragged people down and drowned. And I feel like almost that's the image I'm getting that he was protecting. Yeah. And like it kind of just like was kind of like hunched over, kind of like like it was yeah. kind of like being suspended back a little bit. So which I, oh. I thought was really interesting because it was almost like something was pulling it back a bit. So yeah. even wow. though it was able to come forward. That's really interesting. And, and yeah. When did the experience it, actually end? Um, pretty much when I was like on the floor. So oh. <laughs> it lasted a few seconds. Okay, so it was a pretty brief encounter, but it sounds like you yeah. got a download of information about what it was. and Yeah, which was, yeah, really, again, very strange. And it's like, I don't know why I would have thought those things. It didn't, I don't know, I like, why would I think? I don't know. Honestly, I've got no idea what it means, but it definitely was like, go no further. So, and I was like, maybe was I traveling in my dreams or something? Yeah, tapping into a past life of your own. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have had people tell me, um, um, like mediums tell me that um, in a past life, I was um, a, a shaman. And, and also, um, I, the, the mediums described it as, as a squaw, which I'm, I think may be slang as well. But what she intended by that was um, like kind of the chief's wife. So Oh. Yeah. So actually two two separate um indigenous. Yeah. Well that was sense why you're so gifted in being able to see it's interesting. It's yeah, really, really, really interesting. Into, and often you just can tap into previous lifetimes. Yeah, yeah. So really um, kind of good timing, you know, it's like the past, the future all sort of creates the now, you know, it comes to get and melts yeah. into the now. So um, you know, obviously you were in bed, you were perhaps just at that twilight where you're about to fall asleep and that's when you're the most psychic where you see, you tap yeah. into the um, past and life. When, when I was younger, um, my mum told me I would actually write diaries um, like as a um, Native American. So, oh, <laughs> and like what wow. we would eat and how we would like um, hunt. Oh, and, lovely, yeah. Have and you like jewelry that we would wear? Have you ever thought to sit and really learn to meditate and do some spiritual development? Uh, uh, I think it just all comes back to maybe being afraid. Like if you let one in, how many more kind of thing? Oh, it's not a, yeah, no. I think like being able to develop your gift means that you understand it more. You have less yeah. around it, which means you'll tap into the more positive aspect of it. See, when people... Yeah, yeah more negative aspect is because they're constantly fearing oh, is something going to show up tonight or yeah. is going to attack me or whatever so but when people like that are highly intuitive and sensitive and have had very powerful past lives as yourself when you find yourself developing your gifts you will feel more back in control like you were when you were in your past life it's just that through each yeah. lifetime we forget we forget our skills, our gifts. So therefore, you're reclaiming a part of you that has been forgotten. Yeah, and, and reclaiming I, that part of you that's been forgotten means that you will develop those beautiful spiritual gifts in a way that you can enjoy it. And maybe do something with them. You don't know where yeah. that journey can take you. You know that you might 
write a book or you might go out and help people with it. But yeah. I feel like for you, it's definitely worth pursuing because that's yeah. like part of you. You've come here to do that. So rather than running away from it all the time and just focusing on the fear that it's caused you, um, it's I feel with you, it's like taking control and just going back and, and, and reactivating those gifts that are already within you and mm. being able to use it for the good of yourself and perhaps the good of others. Yeah, yeah. Like cause there has been like there has been like the odd um really positive experience. Well, of course. And that that was just be like, a lot more. So when you maybe. develop there'll be a lot more of the positive. Yeah, yeah. But when you're but, not developing and you're just you know moving around in that space of fear, then you'll tend to just attract and bring into your mm -hmm. recollection the fearful moments of your past lives or, you know, like I said, the fearful things that are happening around you. Yeah, it's and it, it is between our physical world and the spirit world, but it's just your state of mind, your state of heart, where you're at, your belief system, it all contributes to what you're bringing into mm. your reality. I think, yeah, if, if I had someone to kind of like guide that sort of transition, I would probably feel a lot safer, but yeah, um, yeah. Other, yeah but I guess it's just yeah. kind of hard to find you know our patreon <laughs> yeah man I, yeah. I like that is it. you know it, it only just um, gets weirder and weirder you know like um and it will and you don't want to just go <laughs> the rest of your life always fearing that you know something's going to show up and and scare yeah you to death and you know, you don't want to keep on living that way when obviously you know to me what i'm feeling is you have a lovely gift you just need to um yeah just be able to channel it in a more positive way yeah 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 so that's, that's really the best solution because yeah i hear look i have a lot of people who say oh this has happened that has happened this is and that is it's all bad 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 and it's very scary but once they begin to harness learn to harness their gift and be able to manage and control it it becomes a really beautiful thing yeah it like could yeah i think it that, definitely could be yeah you don't and want to miss out on that, part. Like that for me too when i started out being so young and just getting to my teens and going i don't want this to happen to me anymore i don't want I remember slowly just, you know, being able to connect with my guides and and I joined in more spiritualist church back then. And I, 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 I really thought, you know, what I am going to, you know, somehow find the people that will help me and teach me and open. And, and it really, you know, I, I realized my gift was just a beautiful thing that I was born with. And I was, you know, yeah. I was, for, you can deliver messages for people. Yeah, it became really mm. a privilege to have these gifts mm. rather than kind of always sort of feeling like, you know, there's something behind me and it's going to, you know, yeah. Today, what's going to happen tonight when I go to bed? Yeah, mm. stuff, they're, they're, stuff is following you around, and you know, and it shouldn't be that way. You know, I, I always believe that any spirits that come in and begin scaring us, I'm like, no, you go away because I'm not mm. that. You know, then that's the best way to deal with it because you don't, you know, spirits that you know, you're, if they're your guides, if they're people who are loving, are honoring, and and you know helping you on your journey will not come in and bring that fear and bring that yeah, people. yeah like th there's no way so mm. Mm. i i think also for a long time um i was always just worried that a lot of it was my imagination so um but it was <laughs> yeah but i've had like two really strange experiences where um was actually able to back it up um, historically. Yeah. And, and oh, without was, even oh, knowing please. anything about it. <laughs> that was, that was. Uh, well, so I have been avoiding it for a long time, but then hubby decided we should go on a ghost tour. Yeah. Um, and I was like, as long as it's not the quarantine station, okay, <laughs> fine, we'll <give> it go. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, when I was there, I was just seeing things kind of like the whole time. And... Um, I don't know, but for some weird reason, I was kind of excited. I don't know, like rather than scared that time. I don't know because we were in a group or whatever. But um, afterwards, I said to the the tour guide, I was like, 
oh my gosh, like, you know, in that first place you were talking about the lady and I think I could see her and she said, oh, what was she wearing? And I kind of described this and, um, you know, but that could have just been her trying to sell more tickets or whatever. But she said, um, come, come with me and we'll look at some different places and you can tell me what you're getting from there. So we went down one street and she said, when you're looking at this place, what do you, what do you get? And I said, look, I got to be honest, um, I'm getting a boxer. <laughs> and she was like a boxer. And I said, yeah, yeah, a boxer. Um, not a very nice guy, but he's like a bare knuckled boxer. Um, I feel like he owned a gun and, you know, and she was just like, what? She's like, no, I think that's where the mayor used to like, you know, I think he built a place there. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, like, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, never mind. It was my imagination. Um, but for some reason I was kind of like um, fixed on it. And I was like, I'm just going to look it up. And then I Googled the rocks and I got a name. I think it was like, Larry Foley or something like that. Um, so I looked up The Rocks, Larry Foley, and he was a bare knuckled boxer that was in a gang called The Rocks Push. Oh, no <laughs> way. That's yes. amazing. Yeah, and uh, I think there was something maybe that like the gang that he was in hit a gun in the chimney or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that was probably the time where I was like, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. <laughs> Is there a slight possibility that maybe I'm not crazy? Cause I don't think you're yeah. crazy. We would tell them if you were. We're all a bit crazy. Yes. Anyway. Hey, no one knew. <laughs> we're crazy that we even decided to come back to this planet. But look, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I just wish that you could this there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think that was kind of when I was like maybe still a bit frightened, but maybe excited that maybe there could be yeah. something to it. So that's when I was like maybe a little bit more open to it. And then mm -hmm. that's when we had like another um, thing that happened where I was able to sort of check it against um, without knowing yeah, anything cool. about it. So. You do that, yeah, and give yourself that proof. And yeah. Validation. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what, I think it was like a validation moment. Wow. Yeah, which yeah. I think is why it was so exciting, I think, rather than scary. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Kim, I, I want to jump back to, uh, you know, talking about how the water spirit that you saw in your bedroom yes. uh, was, uh, you you saw them to be like an Indigenous um, yes. American. Um, you talked about how you wrote diaries as though you had lived a life as an Indigenous American um, that your, your mum said when you were younger. Oh. And uh, what's the other thing you said? Oh, and you've had mediums say that, that, that you know, in past lives. Now, yeah. I, of course, know, know a, a bit because we've had conversations off camera, but yes. tell, there is actually a really amazing fact <laughs> you shared with me last yes. time I spoke to you. I did, yes. I would like you to share that with our audience now because yes. I think they're going to be particularly blown away when they hear this. It's, so please tell it's us. Very, well, I before I do say, I just want to say quickly yes. that I have always been drawn to that kind of, um, particularly like Navajo, I've always just been particularly drawn to that culture and the people and just everything about it, just always drawn to it to the point where um, in 20, 2014, uh, maybe 2017, yep. we went to, I went all the way out to Arizona to visit the Navajo reservation. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just did like a massive like driving tour of the area and it was just amazing um mm. but this was all before way before because it was only recently I found out that yes I actually have um Indigenous American blood so about a quarter of me so I, is... Native American in my genetics so <laughs> I, I yeah just... and Spanish as well right right but I find, yeah. I mean, you, you were talking before about um, proof to back things up. I mean, the fact that you've discovered that you are yeah. basically a quarter Native American. and I had no things, idea. Yeah. So no it's like idea. A recent discovery. Well, um, I just always wanted to do the genetic testing. I just thought, oh, that's so cool and interesting. You can learn about yourself. And um, honestly, I had no expectation I really was just open to sort of any result I really wasn't hoping for anything or 
expecting that kind of result at all. And so when it came back, I was just completely floored. I just could not believe it. And the, the fact that I had traveled so um, with my particular result, they were able to um, like fine tune locations. Mm. So um, so apparently what it is um, in Mexico, a lot of them traveled um, upwards and that a lot of had settled in um, in Arizona. And there was like, there's obviously the Navajo reservation, which is really quite large, but there's also another group called the, the Hopi. And um, yeah, so they actually linked it to that area. So um, there was like these people, the Pueblins that had traveled up and then they, they'd settled um, in that area. So mm. I just couldn't believe it. I, I was just like, that is literally where we were driving. And honestly, when I was there, I just had this feeling of this really bizarre feeling. I was like, I am 100% home. Like I'm home, I'm home. And it was just the weirdest thing. As soon as my feet hit the ground, I was like, and I just couldn't figure it out. I was like, well, why? <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh, just because I've always wanted to come here. But um, it could be a lot truer than I thought. So, yeah. Amazing. Uh, you're you're obviously like, wild. you're super tuned in, Kim. Like you're super, super tuned in to, to that stuff. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, which and like I, I don't my mum didn't even know, which is wild because she's like, you know, um, but there's also like a large portion of um Spanish, and I think there was a lot of colonization um in in that area as well. So it kind of like all kind of maps out really well. Totally. So, um yeah. and then the other one was um uh Basque, which I was like, I have no idea. But have you heard of Basque? I I had not heard of it, but yeah, apparently it's like a little ocean, like a a short like somewhere coastal or something like that. So, right. um, but that was yeah, massive surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it kind of matches up with all these things that have been happening yeah. and things have been drawn to. And well, that's so funny because honestly, I had no idea, no idea at all when I saw that that spirit, and then the fact that like. The part of me was indigenous. I just was like, "This is w wild." <laughs> it really is. It made no it really, sense. It really is. And you know what? When you when you were talking about that that being kind of just jumping out of nowhere, I it triggered a memory I had once, which was a bit. Oh, did you? I was awake, and I saw. So what, what? This is a few years ago, and um, I was dating someone, and we were asleep in bed. And for some reason, I just felt like something was in the room and I woke up and I literally saw a hand like it was coming oh. through. It's almost like if there was a veil of between the spirit world and our world, it's like yeah. they had just reached through the veil. Like an opening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and but it was a hand and it, and it was going into her head <laughs> and, 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 and I know, and, but I was you're in such shock when you see something like that so i'm, I'm looking yeah. at it going terrifying um okay i'm awake i'm definitely <laughs> imagining that because i'm literally awake right now yes exactly uh, surely it's going to disappear in a minute nope still there it's yeah still that's there. the part where you're like what <laughs> yeah and then and then suddenly i start it's funny now and, but it's scary at the time <laughs> yeah and i started panicking what do, what do i do what do i do and then i thought well, i've got to wake her up there's a <laughs> hand in a in her head so what does it want like why? Yeah, what does it want? and i sh and i, and I kind of like shook her awake and i was like wait wait wake up wake up wake up and she went yeah. and kind of like what woke up with a, with a fright and she said that when she woke up she said it felt like something had pushed her backwards that was the first Whoa. thing that I woke up as though something was holding me and then pushed me backwards. And she goes, literally, the, the second before I woke up, I was having a dream that someone was trying to push an, a letter with a message under a door to me. So in Whoa. her head, seeing some, and so I'm like, obviously something was trying to like plant. And that was the movement as well. So it strange. One of the strangest things I've ever seen, just a hand coming out of thin yeah. air into someone's head. And Not like, you know, the, the fact that you see it, like, does it, it want to be seen? Like you're in on that message, that, you that's know? Thing. It's like, yeah, it, was it an accident? Was it not an accident? Because um, I always thought like they don't get seen by accident, right? That's what I kind of, like, they're conscious. Is there any sort of consciousness to them? 
Yeah, of course there is. You know, being seen? Yeah. Or yeah. is it just like an echo? I don't think they're think. worried about being seen, really. Like, I don't care. No. So you I don't mean, think there are I'm wondering, do they plan it? Like, do they? Yeah, there are things? unseen entities that work, you know, in order to manipulate you and they don't want to be seen. But, yeah, right. you know, that's right. a whole different story, that lot. Mm. But yeah. often these spirits and things, they don't, you know, they don't care that they're being seen. Yeah, I would say this because they're in their care. own reality, just yeah. like we are in ours. So that for them, their reality that they're in is quite normal for them. Did you get like any other information from that? Or, um, that particular. Or it's just really just purely, you know. Yeah, it, it yeah. was. It was just the whole. She was having a dream about the letter under the door. There was nothing else. That came. Oh. Having said that, mm. she was as a person. She was a little tuned into that stuff. So yeah, there was actually a lot. We had there was quite a few paranormal things that happened while I dated her because I. I, I that stuff is kind of like a little drawn to me. It was obviously a little drawn to her and getting like to doubled. The, it, it, doubled. Du it doubled. It doubled. It, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it was just like, okay, this is kind of like magnified. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh gosh. Yeah. gosh. Yeah. Oh, That's well, cool. It's been lovely to meet you. You do have an incredible gift. So yeah. Oh, thank you. So it's been great chatting. I just love, you know, it's nice to find um, people to chat about this stuff with, like that, you know, yeah. do it and that, understand. That helped me. I had to go out there and meet like-minded people to help me yeah. because back in my time too, there wasn't, it wasn't even spoken about. So I really going out there and finding like-minded people really helped me to accept my gifts and then want to progress with them. Yeah. It was fascinating. Yeah. So fascinating. It is. It is. And look, if you have any other um, incidents or updates, Kim, we'd love to hear from it. Come and come and chat to us. <laughs> However much it. time you've got. <laughs> we love the wild stories. We love the wild stories. So, so bring them on. We'll um, do shadow people next time if you're oh, interested. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah. That's a good yeah. topic. I don't think we've yeah. talked too much about that. So that might be a good topic yeah. for a future episode. So we can, we can do that. Definitely. I've cool. had a great time. Yeah, well, thank you for talking. It's oh, lovely to chat you. and um, we'll certainly hear more from you in the future, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Loved it. 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, well, thank you again. Right. Um, thanks to you. everyone thank who's you. listening or watching and uh, we will, of course, see you again for an episode in the future. So see you soon. Bye, Kat. Bye, James. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you, Kim. Bye, bye Kim. Bye-bye. To gain access to private spiritual development classes, guided meditations, and live Q&As with Katerina, please visit www.patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash the Australian Ghost Whisperer.